Hey what is going on guys, I hope you're all doing well. Now in today's video, I will be walking you guys through the strutted box on Hack the Box. Now this video will be a little bit dumbed down and a little bit easier for new beginners to understand. So I will not go fully into depth about stuff that we try out in this video. Now this is a medium box and I do not recommend it if this is your first box that you're doing on Hack the Box as there are a bunch of other machines that would be more suitable for you. YouTube, this video is for educational purposes only. Please use whatever you learn from this video in an educational manner as you can get in a lot of trouble. Now once you guys are ready, you will need to have some sort of Linux. Now you can technically hack from Windows, um, however, it doesn't really work that well. So what's really common is people will use something called a virtual machine. Now you can go ahead and Google how to set up a Kali Linux virtual machine, and I'm using Kali 2024. Now this is an older release of Kali, but it still should work. Now once you guys do have some sort of Kali, you need to head to app.hackthebox.com slash machine slash list slash retired. And we can zoom in a little bit. We're going to be doing the strutted box here. So we'll go ahead and click that. So this one's machine slash strutted. Um, so we'll just go ahead and we'll go up to connect to hack the box. Perfect. And you can click on machines and click on open VPN and you can download your VPN. Now, me personally, I found out that UDP 1337 doesn't really work for me. So I always go with TCP 443. However, it's really up to you and it's your personal choice. You can just go ahead and download that and transfer that onto your virtual machine. Once you do have it on your virtual machine, let's go ahead and click on join machine. Let's give this a moment here. And this gives us our IP address. So this is going to be our target. And I'm gonna be referring to this number as our target throughout this video. So we can copy this whole IP here. And let's go back to our virtual machine. Perfect. Once you're on your virtual machine, we're going to need to install OpenVPN. Now you need to open up a terminal, so you can hit Control, Alt, and T, or go up to the top and click on Terminal. Once you're ready, go ahead, type sudo apt install, then OpenVPN. Go ahead, enter in your sudo password. If you just installed Kali and you hasn't changed your password, the default login should be Kali and Kali. So you can clear your screen. Now we can type sudo open VPN. Then we'll type your username followed by dot OVPN. Now for me, I changed it, so it should be Alfred Redbird HTB dot OVPN for me, but it could be something different for you. So hit enter and enter in that sudo password if you're prompted. And now a whole bunch of stuff should pop up. Once you see some numbers up here in the corner of the screen, go ahead, close that, and the numbers should go away. And in just a couple seconds, they should come back. There we go. Now this is our IP. All right, now this is our IP. So we're connected to their special virtual network. So I, when I refer to us, I may refer to us or our IP. And so what I mean by that, I mean by this number right up here. So once we're ready, open up a terminal here. And we'll type sudo nmap-sv for service version. And we'll do dash t5 for be really quick, dash sc for common scripts, dash a for do an all around scan. And we'll do dash p and a lowercase n, followed by our IP for a common way to get around the firewall. Hit enter, enter in your shooter password once more, and we're just going to wait a moment. Now while that's doing that, let's go ahead and we'll open up another terminal. Now in this terminal here, we could type sudo nano slash etc for Etsy slash hosts with an S, enter in that pseudo password. Right down here, we can put in our IP and we'll follow it by strutted, S-T-R-U-T-T-E-D dot uh, H-T-E-B for hack the box. That's going to be our domain. So we'll hit control X, hit Y, then hit enter. Perfect, and we can close this out. And we can see right here, our machine is running two different ports. It's running port 22 and port 80. So if we go back to here, first question is how many TCP ports are running on strutted? Uh, so we can see once again, that is two. Now right here, task two, clicking download triggers a zip file downloaded containing the Docker environment for the application. What is the name of the application server running on the target? So we need to go ahead and check this out. So we'll go back to our virtual machine. Now we'll go up to our browser here. I'm we'll just go to http colon slash slash shredded dot hack the box or dot htb and we can see right here looks like we just got a little image submission thing um so 
all these links here seem to just explain about the page. Now the download thing is what we're really interested in. So we'll just click download and we'll let this download. Now let's go ahead and we'll just minimize this page for right now and we'll open up our downloads here. Now looks like I already downloaded this before so we'll just extract this once more to right here and there we go. Looks like we have tomcat-users.xml, readme.md, the docker file, content.xml, and the strutted folder. Inside of strutted here we got a whole bunch of other files. This is just the Java code for the page it looks like. So we'll just come back to that in a little bit. Now readme here seems to be just a little bit of info about the page. Docker file is just docker scripts. So for tomcat users.xml we have admin, we got password, and we also have some roles here. Now this doesn't seem too much, but I'm getting the gist that this server is running Apache Tomcat. Now if you don't know, Apache Tomcat is a type of web server, and we can tell obviously by the name Tomcat here. So I'm just going to go, we'll take a guess, type Tomcat. And there we go. Perfect. Task number three here. In the Java project, what is the name of this file that contains the dependencies for the application? Now, if you guys do not know, Java, Java, unlike Python, can, has to use a special dependency file known as the pom.xml. And so we'll go ahead and type pom.xml right in there. Now, what is the name of the MVC framework used by the application? Now, once again, we know this is Tomcat, so this is going to be Apache. Apache Tomcat. Oops. No. So what is the name of the MVC, the MVC framework used by the application? So let's go ahead, we'll go back to our virtual machine. And let's go inside of strutted and let's open up our pom.xml. Now right here we have a whole bunch of dependencies. If you guys do not know what's going on here, it's a whole lot of stuff here, but that's okay. So right after the very top, we just have our names of the dependencies and we also have their version. We got Maven and we have here Struts2. Now Struts2 is Apache Struts. Uh, this is running 6.3.0.1 which is a vulnerable version of Apache Struts. So my guess is we're running here Apache Struts. Alright, now what is the version of the framework? Now this was 6.3.0.1, right? Now what is the 2024 CVE ID? Now I went ahead and did some digging on this CVE right here. Now I did find it was first reported by the NIST, nvd.nist.gov slash vulm slash detail slash CVE 2024-53677. Now this is our common vulnerability ID. So we can copy this here. And this should be our answer once more. Answer that in. Perfect. Now what system user is the web application running on at Strutted? So now we do not know this. Um, we could try to guess from the POM XMLs. So I guess we can do that. We had manager. Let's see, nope, that was a little wrong. We also have admin as well. And let's try that. Nope, that didn't work. And that was more of a goose chase. So now we actually have to exploit the machine in order to bring this out. So we'll go back to our virtual machine here. Let's close all this and minimize this. Perfect. So we'll open up a new terminal. Now here's where the little interesting stuff starts. Now we could run this all ourselves. However, I think it would be easier to use a script. So this is what we'll do. We'll increase our size here. And we'll just type git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash jackabacos slash cve 2023-50164. Okay, now let's give that a moment to clone. And we'll type cd and do the cve here. And we can type python 3 mvenv for virtual environment. And we'll also do a venv as well right after that. Just give us a moment to start the virtual environment. Now we can type source virtual environment slash bin slash activate there we go now if we type ls we can cd and do exploit here and we can type pip install oops install dash r then requirements.txt well let's give us a moment to install those really quickly all right perfect 
Now the reason we're using a virtual environment is so that when we're done we can just delete the folder and everything goes away. So we could type nano exploit.py and we need to change a couple of things. Now before we change that I just want to try to see what would happen if we were to upload an image that was not supported here. So let's just go ahead and click on browse. Let's try to upload a JSP file. How about that? And click on upload and yeah once again JP, JPG, JPEG, PNG, and only GIFs are allowed. Uh, we can see it mentions it right here too. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and let's upload a GIF. So we'll change the script a little bit. So right here, number of parents in path, we'll change that to be five. Now if we go down just a wee bit more, we can see right down here, war file content. We're going to need to add an extra file here. We'll type war underscore file underscore content is equal to and then we do a B double quotes GIF all caps followed by 89A semi no 89A colon with double parentheses plus then war underscore file underscore content. So this is pretty much telling our payload that this is a GIF here. And right down here right where it says arbitrary dot txt we must change that to a GIF as well. And as well as this right here, application slash octic stream, we need to change that to image slash gif. So we're pretty much saying to Mr. Web Server here that we are uploading a gif. Now we're also adding on our payload to this gif. So it's uploading the payload as a gif and the server doesn't really know what to do. So it just believes that it's a gif and just accepts whatever we give it. So once we're ready, we can type python3 and we'll do dash we would type python3 exploit.py dash dash url. Now we must go back over here and once we uploaded an image here, we can we can collect the URL right here, strutted.hackthebox slash upload.action. We'll take that and we'll paste this in. Go ahead, hit enter, and we'll just wait a second. And there we go. We now have a CMD, it says. So if we type who am I, we can see our name is Tomcat here. So we'll go back here. And that should be our username, Tomcat. Oops, spelled that wrong. Tomcat. There we go. Now, what is James user's password on Strutted? Okay. Now let's let's do some digging here. So we can type ls. We just got some files here. So after some digging here, I found out we also have here cat dot slash c o n f slash Tomcat dash users dot xml. Now once I read this here, you can see that it's a little bit different from the xml that we got before. Now one thing I actually noticed here is the username here, admin. The password also is a little bit different. So I'm going to copy that. And so let's go ahead and we'll close our connection here. Clear our screen. We can type ssh james at and we also need to enter in that IP of our target, so 10.10.11.59. And should we go ahead and enter in that pseudo password there. And there we go, we are now logged in as James. So if we go back here to hack the box, it says submit the flag located in James user's home directory. So to do this here, we can just type ls, and yeah, we have user.txt, so cat user.txt, and we'll go ahead and we will copy that. And we'll go back here, we'll paste that in. And there we go, we now have that flag. Now how difficult was it to find the flag? Now this is optional, I'm just going to put... Eh, it's pretty easy. I'll submit the flag there. Alright, what command can James... What command can the James user run with elevated privileges using sudo? Now we can go ahead and check this by typing sudo-l. And we can see on the machine here, the user James may run the following commands on localhost. This is all here, no password, and command is tcp dump. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this command here which will go ahead and create a file with this command in it. So if we type cat and then pwn for pawn we can see that it runs the command id that it also runs connect back to our machine here. So let's make sure we have permissions to run this so we can type chmod plus x and then pwn and x means executable and back over here on our terminal here. You can open another terminal if you don't have it. 
but I'll just use this one again. We'll type netcat, so nc lvnp, and we'll do 9001. And so now it's going to listen on that port for any type of connection. And we'll just type, right, and we'll go ahead and type this command in here, hit enter, and let's just give this a moment. And there we go, we have a connection now. Now it's really good practice to go ahead and attempt to spawn an elevated shell with this command here. Sometimes it doesn't work, but you don't need to do this. Uh, I just prefer to do it as I like to see who I am and get extra privileges. So I can clear my screen here. I can type ls and it looks like, yeah, we are still in home slash James. So we type cd slash root, then we do cat, there you go, we can type ls. Yeah, we'll do cat root.txt. We can see we have our flag here. We'll copy that. And we'll go back here. Oh, and we forgot to enter TCP dump. And the last one here is that hash. And there we go. We pawned our machine, guys. With that, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Now, please make sure to like and subscribe as it really helps out a ton. And join the Discord as I will be really active in the Discord channels and giving people guidance and tutoring for free. So with that said, I'll see you guys all in the next video.